All right, let's talk a little bit about module one, the NAR's first time home buyer statistics. Now, before we can actually get into the uh, statistics, let's talk a little bit about what is considered to be a first time home buyer, because that vision or those words bring up a picture in your mind, but there's actually a lot of different qualifications that can be met for someone to actually become a first time home buyer. So according to the Department of Housing and Urban Development known as HUD, there is a first time home buyer is an individual who meets any of the following criteria, all right? So obviously the most common one that I actually don't even have listed on here is the one that you probably think about. Somebody that's never owned a home at all, period, nothing. Move from their parents' house to college, to graduation, to buying a home. That would be the obvious first time home buyer. That is one that most of us think that we are working with. However, there are some other qualifications that could count as first time home buyers. So for an example, an individual who has not held ownership in a principal residence during the last three year period, ending on the date of purchase of the new home, not going under contract. So let me give you an example. Let's say they owned a home and they sold that last home in May the 15th of 2018 and moved into an apartment or they went into that nomadic lifestyle, which is popular now where people move around and work remotely. They can actually be considered a first time home buyer as long as they don't purchase or close on a home before May the 15th of 2021. So if they, that their three year time period would end on May the 14th and they close on May the 16th or 17th, they would actually be considered a first time home buyer, even though they have technically already owned a house. They could have owned four or five houses. As long as there's been a three year gap of non ownership, they can qualify for all of the programs for first time home buyers. All right. Now, if it's a couple getting married and one spouse was a homeowner, but the other one was not, they actually default to the non homeowner. So as an example, if a female owns a home, marries a man, they decide to buy a home. That home they purchased could be considered a first time home buyer. As long as there's one caveat, the one that is not the homeowner is actually on the loan too. All right. So that, that it's not listed there, but trust me, that's the caveat. So in other words, there's a lot of times you guys work with married spouses and they buy a home and one says, well, I can't be on the, the note or the mortgage because I don't have the credit. Well, that's not going to help because that's going to look like the homeowner. So the one that's not the homeowner, which allows the company, uh, the company, <laughs> which allows the couple to default to non-homeowner homeowner actually has to be one of them on the loan. All right. Here's another one. A currently single parent who actually owned a home as a married couple. So it now single parent. So they have to be granted physical custody. But if that couple was married, female moves away, granted custody of the child, she could become a first time home buyer, even though they were owned as tenants by the entirety, which is one couple. This is viewed as a new person, so to speak. So they would also qualify for the first time home buyer exemption or first time home buyer uh, loans and help and all of that stuff, even though they currently owned a home as a married couple. If you owned a home that was your principal residence that was not on a permanent foundation, according to the state law. 
such as a mobile home. So if they lived in a mobile home and cl claimed that as their personal residence or their principal residence, and it's not truly a piece of real property, when they go to buy a home, they could also claim first time home buyer exemption. Uh, I keep saying exemption, I'm sorry. They claim first time home buyer and they could get other benefits. So it's not just a person that's never owned a home. Now here's another one. An individual who has owned a property that is not in compliance with any state, local, or building code laws and cannot be brought into compliance for a cost less than it would be to build that structure. Now, I have never seen this. I am not even sure if this could exist but this is one of HUD's definitions. So I don't know, I mean, I can't even make an example because I've never seen this. Somebody that would live in a home that is not compliant with building codes or maybe it was never issued a certificate of occupancy and therefore they have to move out, that they could qualify and get the first buyer's assistance, all right? So let's talk a little bit about the National Association of Realtors, the NAR's market statistics. And these are very current statistics, if you will note here. So the Generation Y, Gen Y buyers, that are the that is the age of 22 to 39. They are the single largest market of home buyers currently, 38%. Typically, this market is the one that's going to fall into that first definition that you most think about as truly have never owned a home, all right? So it makes a whole bunch of sense to me that this is the largest home buyer market. It should to you. They are the ones that are freshly out of high school. They just got out of their vocational training or their college. They just probably recently got married. They are looking to start their first home. Um, so this is the largest group there is, Generation Y. Followed by Gen X, who are typically the 40 to 54 year old age. They are 23% of all the home buyers. They are the highest earning home buyers with a median income of over 110 grand a year. Now, once again, kind of logically makes sense in the progression of life. In that 40 to 54 year old age, they now have probably into their second job or a second promotion, and they are the largest uh, income grossing uh, group there is. Followed by the baby boomers, which actually I fall into this group. I was technically the last year of baby boomers. They consist of basically about a third of all the buyers. So they're a third. We are probably in that group of range that are looking to now downsize our homes. And then the last group, which they call the silent generation, is that 74 and older. Uh, they represent the smallest share of only 6% of homes. Once again, logic prevails to tell you, well, of course that is true because these people probably already are in their final home. Um, notice I did not say final resting place. <laughs> I said final home and probably don't buy much after that age again, all right? So those are some of the buyer statistics. Let's look at first time home buyer stats. In the year 2020, 2.3 million Americans became first time home buyers. That is a 14% increase in the same time frame as last 2019. Think about that. From in one year, first time home buyers jumped 14%. Now, how do we attribute that? I am not sure, other than maybe low interest rates are driving the market. There are a lot of uh, first time home buyers out there that are getting into the market. But once again, as we stated earlier, they are the largest group by population. 
So now, along come low interest rates, and they decide, hey, we probably need to buy our first home. So the uh, percent of sales jumps 14%. Technically, according to the NAR, overall home ownership is only right at two-thirds, 66%. So two thirds of the population own home, which means one third of the population actually is not a homeowner and that can become your target market. You're looking at one third of the population that could potentially become first time home buyers. All right. Now here's another interesting statistic that I thought was kind of unique. Uh, this was once again, right at 2020. According to NAR, the supply of homes has decreased from 2.7 months to down to 1.9 months, under two months of home sales. What that's telling you is that if we never listed another home from today, according to the current velocity of the market, we would be out of homes in under two months. We would sell all the homes. It's been as high as eight and nine months before. Currently, we are under two months. So that is driving this market that you guys are experiencing and you are experiencing in all the states throughout the United States, Virginia and Florida and Indiana and Nevada. Every state has this quote unquote hot market going on right now. And the NAR is confirming this by telling you that it has reduced the number of homes by a third. We went from 2.7 uh, down to 1.9 worth of homes available on the market. All right, so stick around. We're gonna switch over here and go over to the next module. Once again, don't forget, if you've got questions uh, out there, feel free. If you've got questions at home, you can email me at raymond at realuniversity.com and I can get you these statistics. There was a whole bunch, but I didn't want to bore a whole bunch of you with numbers because I know everybody's eyes tend to glaze over. So hold on.